Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, what are the benefits of using hybrid PCBs in high-frequency applications? Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a senior market development engineer for Rogers Corporation. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about hybrid printed circuit boards, PCBs, that are used in high-frequency applications. To begin with, a simple definition for a hybrid PCB is a multilayer that uses dissimilar materials, and typically this is done to achieve a uh, performance of a printed circuit board that is desired on several different levels that I'll talk about in just a few minutes. But a um, hybrid PCB many times is a printed circuit board that has many layers that have uh, electrical needs that are different on the different layers. So some layers will be very critical for high frequency performance and other layers will not be critical for high frequency performance. As an example, some layers may be used at high frequency RF and other layers could be used for power planes or control circuits and, uh, and different things like that where the um, high frequency properties are not that important. So some of the layers that are not critical for electrical performance, uh, many times different materials are used other than high frequency materials such as FR4 or polyamides or high T sub G FR4s, things like that. So the reason that hybrids are used in uh, the high frequency uh, applications are really, there's five good reasons, there's multiple reasons, but five that are really the major reasons why hybrids are used. The first one would be cost. Sometimes there's a cost advantage to combining dissimilar materials to make a multilayer printed circuit board. Uh, another reason is CTE or reliability. Uh, CTE is coefficient of thermal expansion and that relates to the end user, end user uh, reliability of the circuit itself. And then also there is electrical benefits sometimes to combining dissimilar materials. There's thermal benefits to combining dissimilar materials. And then there's also the ease of fabrication. Sometimes different materials are combined even though they're dissimilar, that they actually can give a benefit to the fabrication process of the printed circuit board itself. So on the topic of cost, uh, combining different materials is very often done uh, to lower the cost of the overall multilayer printed circuit board. So as can be seen in this picture, there are two layers that are electrically critical, the top and the bottom layer of this multilayer. This multilayer is a five layer circuit. The top and bottom layers are electrically critical and what I mean by that, they have high frequency uh, electrical performance needs that are very critical. And then the other layers are not electrically critical and again this could be ground planes, power planes, could be control circuits, things that are not really that critical to electrical performance. And that material could be like an FR4, could be a high TG, T sub G FR4, could be a polyamide material. Uh, and this will be essentially materials that are a little bit better for cost. And the combined performance still has the good electrical performance with the layers uh, that are electrically critical using the high frequency materials. And then the other layers that are not critical can use a lower cost material. Another reason for uh, hybrid printed circuit boards and high frequency applications would be the, uh, the combination of materials to improve the CTE and that's the coefficient of thermal expansion which does have a uh, direct relationship to reliability. So in this case I've uh, given an example of the uh, five layer multi-layer printed circuit board and the top layer is actually the critical layer for electrical performance. The other layers are not electrically critical and in this case I've assumed the designer uh, picked a high frequency material that's very good for electrical performance but maybe not so good for CTE. So some materials are like that. And in this case the other layers are not electrically critical so you can use a different material that um, will be uh, very good for CTE values and the combined CT overall of the multilayer circuit will be improved with these other materials with improved CTE values. A uh, word of warning on this diagram for this circuit construction would be that uh, it's always uh, good to have a balanced construction. What I mean by that is the top and bottom layer should be the same material or at least the material with the same performance for uh, uh, thermal characteristics and properties like that. In this case you can see that I did not do that and this is somewhat of an exception to that so uh, this is okay to do but what you really should do is talk to the printed circuit board fabricator to ensure they're okay with this or, or you could talk to the Rogers technical support team and uh, ensure that they're okay with doing a uh, stack up as such. Another reason for using hybrid printed circuit boards is uh, for thermal management or improving thermal uh, management issues. In this case, what I've shown is a four-layer multi-layer printed circuit board. 
and it is a hybrid using dissimilar materials and the designer in this case has chose a material that has very good electrical performance on the outer layers however this material does not have good thermal conductivity and the uh, materials that are below are not electrically critical so you can use a material that has a very good thermal conductivity and below that there is a heat sink that is attached to the circuit so what has to happen with a, a multi-layer printed circuit board? In this case, the outer layer is the high frequency material, and that's where the heat's generally uh, generated from, either an active device on that layer or there's RF heating due to applied power. And the heat flow has to go through the material and through the circuit all the way down to the heat sink. So you do want improved thermal conductivity through the whole circuit board. So if the high frequency laminate that's used on the critical electrical layer does not have good thermal conductivity, the layers below that will actually improve the thermal conductivity with, you, with choosing the material with good thermal conductivity, and that would allow good heat flow. So the combination of the right materials here can actually improve thermal management. What are some of the most common hybrid constructions used in the high frequency industry right now? Well, that's actually the most common that I've seen is the Rogers RO4350B laminate combined with an FR4. And the FR4 is typically a high T sub G FR4. And then also we see a very similar construction with the Rogers RO4835 laminate combined with FR4 or again high T sub G FR4. And in some cases a polyimid as well. And then there's also the combination of RO3003 materials, which is used with high T sub G FR4. That's very common. We see a lot of that, especially in millimeter wave applications. And then finally, we see combinations of our own materials, uh, such as RO3003 combined with RO4350B. And uh, this combination gives enhanced electrical properties, and also they're very good for thermal management issues as well. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner, and I thank you for your time. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.